Hi guys, this is Mahesh Kumawat, and today we are talking about some security operations. So, what do you understand by security operations? How are security operations working in a corporate environment, and what are different type of operations uh, going to perform for the security professionals? So, we are going to discuss about the security things. So, this is the agenda of the topic of security operations. So, we are going to understand and support investigations. So what is a forensic investigation? What, why investigations required? What are the devices we come to investigations? Understand requirements for investigation types. So we come to understand the different type of investigation types. Conduct logging and monitoring activities. How are we going to logging and how are we going to be monitoring the activities? So we come to discuss about the SIM solution. We're talking about source solution, security incident and event management, security operation and automation response. Okay, suppose you are working in a company, and in this company, you are going to be facing some cyber criminal activities going on. So, different type of intruders or the spam emails or anything, cyber uh, criminal activities going on. So, how the security professional going to check? How do you want to know that any type of attacks will be happen? So we're going to discuss about some blocking and monitoring activities, the architecture designing of the SIM solution, security provisioning resources, how you want to deploy our resources for security professionals, understand and apply fundamental security operation concepts. So we're going to discuss about the fundamental security operations and concepts. Apply the source protection techniques. So what are the information protection techniques we're going to allocate? How the information is going to be protected. What are the different type of techniques we're going to perform to protect the information? Conduct incident management. So what is the incident management? What is incident and what is incident management in works into the operation security? Operate and maintain detectives and preventive measures. So what we're going to discuss about some preventive and detective measures for the operations of the security. Implement and support patch and vulnerability management. So we're going to discuss about what is patch patching and what is patch management, what is vulnerability, what is vulnerability management, and how we're going to deploy into the company both the, both the things. We're going to understand and participate in change management process. So in this particular module, we're going to be talking about some ITIL frameworks. So information technology infrastructure library and in this, we discuss about some incident management, change management, release management, configuration management, and number of things. Implement recovery strategies. So what are the recovery strategies? How are we going to take a recovery of different type of devices or the hard disk, or RAM, anything like that? Implement disaster recovery processes. So if any disaster will be happen, suppose your data is going to be uh, uh, lost. Or suppose you are, how are you going to implement the disaster recovery planning into the cloud computing environment? Test disaster recovery plans. How are you going to test the disaster things? Okay. Suppose the power failure is a disaster. Your data is going to be lost. It's a, it's a disaster. Your one of the firewall goes down. It's a disaster. Okay. So your critical activities, critical devices are going to be down, or there may be some problem with your information security data. So how are you going to recover all those things? So we're going to discuss about some different type of planning. Participate in business continuity planning and exercises. So we do going to discuss about some what is a business continuity. How are you going to perform your business continuity work? What different type of planning you can to make doing this? We can do some exercises for all those things. Implement and manage physical security. So what are the implementation and what is the management of it? Security won't address personal safety and security concerns. What is the personal safety and what is the security concern? We want to discuss about in the Okay, so let's let's get going uh, for the all those things. So please mute your audio so that you're going to be easily understand everything without any uh, Please come to the picture. 
what is security operations and what is operation security. So once you go through the thing, you're going to be understanding what are the security operations and what is operation security. So this is basically uh, things like security operations are primarily concerned with the daily tasks required to keep security services operating reliably and efficiently. So what you're going to do, you're going to do daily tasks of security operations. So we have some op operating reliability and efficiently how the security is going to be working in your company. So what are the different type of tasks you're going to do in your company? Suppose you're going to whitelisting IPs, you're going to blacklisting some IPs, you're going to remove some uh, URL filtering, you're going to do application filtering, content filtering, you're going to enable some websites. So this is the daily task of your security operations. Okay. Operation security is primarily concerned uh, with the protection and control of information processing, asset in centralized and distributed environments. So operation security, how are you going to operations you're going to do in game? How are you going to protection of your information? Okay, and how are you going to centralize as, uh, assets in a centralized distribution environment? So suppose you have some DLP solution, you have some SIM solution, how are you going to correlation of the blocks and data? So suppose you have SIM solution, you have different type of locks will be coming of different devices. So you're going to be centralize all those locks and going to distribute the, in the environment. Like you have some DevOps environment, you have some production environment, you have uh, a database environment. So how are you going to be see the logs, analyze the logs, and going to be distribute all those logs to different teams, sending it out. So security operations and operation security, we have two terms. We should be understand the key difference between the two things. Okay. Then we going to understand some understand and support of investigations. So suppose you are going to understand the cybersecurity. And in the cybersecurity, suppose any cyber criminal activities happen in any companies. So as a, as a cybersecurity investigators, investigations, how are you going to perform all those investigations? How are you going to conduct the investigations? This is what we're going to understand. So the investigation, the action of investigating something or someone, formal or systematic examination or research. So can be computer forensics, digital forensics, and network forensics to electronic data, discovery, cyber forensics, and forensic computer. So first of all, what type of investigations you're going to do in it? And what are the key different things you're going to do in it? So we're talking about some computer forensics, digital forensics, and network forensics to electronic data. Okay. And this, this particular investigation, you require some evidences. You're going to collect some evidences, like logs. The, the person is going to be supposed, a hacker is going to log into the specific system. So you're going to do some computer forensics. You want to check it out the logs of the particular time. Okay, you want to take some evidences. You want to click the photos same time. So the matter of the the thing is important to understand. This is the investigation. It's a systematic examination of research. Okay, and it is going to investing something or someone the formal or systematic way to doing the things investigations. So you can want to say that we're going to do a systematic, systematic examination or research uh, of the computer forensics. So we have separate course of CHFI, Computer Hacking Forensic Investigations. This is what we're going to do in our next few classes. We're going to discuss about the computer forensics, system forensics, RAM forensics, hard disk forensics, network forensics, mobile forensics, email forensics. So we have different type of things we're going to discuss later on. But a matter of fact that you need to understand over there, you're going to do some systematic way to examination of the digital media. That's what the investigations you want to do. So suppose example is computer forensics. So computer forensics deals with the process of collecting evidence related to the digital crime. So suppose you are an investigation team and you're going to collect the evidences, the system blocks, the events occurred, when the system going to be hacked. So this is what you're going to finding some digital crime. Cyber crime refers to any illegal act that involves a computer, its systems, or its applications. So the matter of fact that it is going to be illegal act, whatever the illegal act has been performed by the cyber criminals, you're going to investigations. 
so incident an incident is a event that could load of loss of disruption to and regulations operations services of core functions okay so the matter of fact that any incident will be happen suppose you guys are working on a company and any cyber crimes will be happen and cyber criminals are going to uh, lock into the systems or going to collect the your network informations gathering the information of your systems so this is the incident will be happen so this is the loss of the property of your company okay your day to day activities will be hamper same time so this is what we going to understand in our next two classes itl incident management so itl and unplanned and interruption of an it service or the detection in the quality of it service for failure of a configurations icon that has not impacted an it service example failure of one disk from a mirror set so as per the itil itil is a framework information technology infrastructure library and in this framework we going to discuss about the incident and incident management change management configuration management release management so we discuss about incident management any unplanned interruption to an it service suppose your smooth it service is going on outlook is working fine service is going to running fine database is working fine networks working fine okay and at the same time its unplanned interruption has been done okay that is the problem was happened and it is going to be reduced in the quality of an it service or failure of a configuration item okay so that is what impact on the it services so you need to be recover this services as soon as possible to understand and support investigations so the purpose of purpose of performing investigation is to gather facts so that and informed decisions or conclusion can be made or so that an action can be taken with confidence so what type of confidence you want to get in it once you get in the investigations so the matter of fact that we have four different facts of the investigation process evidence collection and handling so first of all this is the what is the right way to getting the evidence collection who is going to collect the evidences what is the requirement of the evidences and what is the way to we going to collect the evidences so suppose you have got some system um, uh, hacked or web server we going to be hacked so you require some evidences so first of all you going to take a snapshot of this specific time zone okay the timing of the evidence will be happen second thing that the user id you going to check it out you going to check the logs of the system okay so without all those you are going to take a snapshot pictures because this the pictures this the evidence is going to be admissible in the court later on so once you get the evidences collection and then how you going to handle all those evidences so we have chain of custody this is the document we going to discuss later on this is the documents will be signed by the authority who is going to uh, evidence going to be collected and pays out till the time when the, this evidence going to be the present on the admission and the court so evidence collection and evidence as handling this is a very important task for the investigations process so any digital crimes or any computer crimes or network crimes as a cyber criminals are going to doing it so as a, as a investigations agents you need to be evidence collection and how you going to handle this all those evidences so you need to go to doing some doing the chain of custody things like that and you going to be uh, you know what uh, take care of all those evidences number 2 is reporting and documentation so you going to reporting to the authority okay like you have suppose you, you are a cbi person you are the police force uh, person or whatever so you need to communicate you going to reporting to the specific task force that yes evidence will be collected and documentation has been done investigative techniques you have some different type of investigative techniques we going to discuss later on digital forensic tools tactics and procedures you require some digital forensic tools so we have different type of tools we tool kits we going to discuss later on and we require some tactics how you going to using it and what is the process for using it suppose the data is available on the ram how you going to take a digital forensic things so you need to dump the 
RAM. Okay, because if the system is going to be shut down or restart, your non volatile memory is going to be lost. Okay, your RAM data will be going to be lost at the same time. So, before you're going to shut down or anything, just take the dump of your RAM. Uh, this is what we were going to go later on. So, the, what is the crime scene? The incident scene is the environment where potential evidence may exist. So, the principles of this criminalist apply. In both cases, so identify the scene. So, first of all, as a cyber criminalistic things approach, you should say that, hey, come on, please identify the scene. First of all, you identify what was the scene. Second thing, protect the environment. How are you going to protect this environment at the same time? Identify evidence and potential source of the evidences. You want to identify the evidences and potential source of evidences. So what are the sources to getting the evidences? You need to collect the evidences. Minimize the degree of contaminations. You want to minimize the contaminations things going on. So the cyber scene you want to create. So type of digital data. Okay. So we have volatile data. We have non-volatile data. So this is the question will be coming into your interviews or some once you going to for the any uh, written examinations of the cyber security any sort of things that. The things will be coming some volatile and data and non volatile data is all about. So, we discuss about volatile data refers to the temporary information on the digital device. So, uh, so, I already suggest you that suppose you have right now my system is working. So, in the, my system has a temporary information will be available on my, my RAM. Okay, that requires constant power supply and it's deleted if the power supply is interrupted. So important volatile data include system time. Okay, my system time will be going to be lost if I don't to shut down. Log launch users, open files, network informations, process informations, process to report mapping, process memory, clipboard content, service drivers, informations and command page etc. So you are going to you're going to be lost all those informations once your system is going to be shut down. So this is a temporary information will be there. So it is a volatile data. And one non-volatile data is data refers to the permanent data stored on the sec secondary storage devices, such as hard disk and memory cards. Okay, so includes hidden files, black space, swap files, index for date, unadopted clusters, and unused partitions, register settings, and event logs. So we have some volatile data. We have non-volatile data. Non-volatile data is not going to be lost. So it's permanent. Suppose you are going to be store the information into your routers and you want to um, running configuration saving to the startup configurations. So once you want to save the configuration into the startup configuration, running configuration, startup configuration, it is saved for permanent basis. And suppose in, in my system, my BIOS, Basic input, input output system by use is my permanent data. Okay, and temporary data you already suggested other memory. Okay, whatever you want to save your data into the hard disk, which is a permanent data, until you're not going to be removed. When the power goes down, when the power comes, your hard disk data will be available. Memory cards data. Okay, so there's all those things you're going to get in it. Okay, live evidences. So live evidence is, is the data are dynamic and exist in running process or other volatile locations. System device RAM that disappear in a relatively short time once the system is powered down. So the matter of fact that suppose your data is available on the system on the system or the RAM. So it is going to processing same time as volatile locations and it's going to relatively disappear. It's a short time duration is the the data will be available. So you want to do the memory dump. All those memory data are going to, going to break it up. So low card exchange principle to any one or anything entering a cyber crime crime scene takes something of the scene with them and leave something to the themselves behind. So whatever the things happen into the security things, into the systems. So the matter of fact is suppose I'm going to log into the systems that the logs will be available. 
So something you want to get in the behind it. So Lockhart principle says that suppose you are the victim, suspect, and something is going to be uh, there in the system. Suppose you want to log into the system, the, the locks will be available. Whatever the application is going to be, you, everything is available until you going to be delete all those things. So all those things will be available. The communications channels, IP address things, your logs, data, your cookies, or your uh, add-ons, okay, browser history. So all the data will be available. Something is behind all the time. So you need to understand that what type, what type of things you want to get in there. So we have general guidelines of scientific working group of digital evidences, SWD, GDE. So all general forensics and procedural principles must be applied, first of all. Seizing digital evidences must not add alter the evidences. You are not going to alter the evidences. Any person accessing original di uh, digital evidence must be trained. So the matter of fact that suppose you are going to do some forensic investigations, you require to be trained on all those evidences. How are you going to collect the evidences? How do you preserve the evidences? How do you admissible in the core in the evidences? You need to understand all those things. So you it is required a trained person. Suppose you go to log into the system and the time zone is going to be changed. You're not going to take a snapshot because already you have logged into the file. You have to open the file and the time zone is changed. So it is required the expertise is required a skilled labor. It says it is required to train people to doing all those digital forensics. So all activity relating to your access storage or transfer of digital evidence must be fully documented, preserved, and available for review. So the matter of fact that you, once you're getting all those accesses, the storage or activity, you're going to transfer some digital evidence. You, you need to be documented all those things. You need to preserve the information someplace. And it is available for review for the code person. Suppose you're going to be admissible in the code, and code will say that, hey, come on, please, Provide me some documentations. Let me know who is going to use this particular things. What was the date? What was the cause? What was the date? Who is who? What type of account was created at that, that time? So all those preserved informations, documented, available for review. Everything should be uh, the evidences, evidences available to required. While an individual is in processing of digital evidences, he or she responsible for all the actions. So suppose you are individual, so getting the evidences, so you are responsible for all the actions, whatever you want to perform and get. General guidance, you want to follow some general guidance guidelines. So once you want to go to the internet and want to find out this particular SWGDE, so you can put more guidelines for the uh, uh, digital forensics or digital evidences. Any agency responsible for seizing, accessing, storing, and Transferring digital evidence is responsible for compliance with the, these principles. So you should be compliant. Suppose uh, you are going to be uh, you are working in a company, and the company is PCI DSS company. Suppose the debit card, credit card information is going to be safe. So before you go to investigation, you need to be understand that what type of company uh, is all about, and all those uh, the security principles, all those uh, storing or transferring digital evidences is. is they are doing it or not doing it. So where they are, com they are compliant or not compliant, all those things, they are responsible or not responsible. So what you want to doing it, you want to do the NIST, SP8, and NIST6, Computer Forensics Guidelines, at least best practice for the computer forensics. So I'm going to opening for you guys. I'm sending you the link same time, so you want to be understand.
So this, this is a site is National Technology Library. Okay. So we have different type of things you want to search in IST. So we going to say that we require 800 hyphen 86. Okay. So it is for digital crimes investigation. So implementing HIPAA security rule. Files we have an IP56A. So what are you going to doing it? I'm going to do S W D D E. This is all those things you want to write in it, my dear friends. So once you have time, just want to review all those things. If you have time, you want to go for the more forensic investigation things like that. Okay, let's move further things. Okay, the another point is data forensic processes. So what are the process of forensics? Suppose you guys to do the data forensics. So what are the process you're going to do in it? Data collection, this is the first one. So first of all, you need to collect the data. You need to collect the evidences. You need to understand what type of data it is. Okay, so mostly you're going to find out some databases. In the databases, you're going to find out some uh, tables, rows, these kind of things. Yeah, you are going to find some CSV files. Okay, so you go to a collection of data from the various sources. It means suppose uh, you're going to collecting the uh, crime scene, you're going to collect the data from the hard disk, you're going to collect the data from the uh, laptops, systems, Mac, MacBooks. Okay, you're going to collect the data from the RAM, you're going to collect the data from uh, uh, the physical uh, machines. Okay, like you're going to collect some data from uh, the dial pen and anything, okay? Anything can be happened. So you have different type of collection of data you want to get into. Whether the system, servers, laptops, personal devices, mobile phones, uh, anything, what can happen. Data examinations. The second process is how you want to examinations. So data collection is first thing, and second thing is how do you examination the data? Which is the important data, which is not important data? So as a forensic investigation person is going to check it out, what is the, the data is required actually? Because you have like lots of data. In this data, what type of data you do you require? So as per the crime scene, as per the investigation process, you need to collect data like the person is logging to the specific time. So what was the date? What was the time? And what was the source? Like he's going to log in from the website. He's going to use the which browser. He's going to uh, uh, hacking some uh, websites. So you need to check it out the IP addresses. You want to check it out some MAC addresses. Okay. You going to uh, check the uh, availability. What are the different things uh, softwares available on the system? Human examination, all those things. Suppose the person in the company is going to install the Kali Linux or uh, into the system, and once he's going to install the Kali Linux in the system, and he's going to uh, snipping the information of the networks. Okay, uh, so this is what the examination point of view to understand that what was the uh, uh, the tools, the techniques, the skills uh, the, the hacker is going to doing it. And as per this uh, skills, you want to examinations what is the re exactly requirement for your investigation purpose. The third thing is data analysis. So that's I'm talking about that what the data you have getting it, your examination, and you need to analyze. So suppose you come to analyze the mobile of the hacker of, or, the, or the, the person attacker, that what type of calls, what type of data is going to be transferred, what type of data is 
available okay and what type of data is transit so data in transit data in use and data at rest so all those things you will be analyzing it from your end so what type of data is going to be sending source to destination okay so you go to investigation as per this who whose are the ip address of that other parties investigation reporting so once you going to analyze all those things you need to do the reporting who you going to reporting it you going to reporting to your top management or you going to reporting to the specific third party vendor you want to investigation reports you need to submit to the uh, police stations or what so this is the reporting things you going to doing so data forensics process is being one forensic considerations of organizations should perform forensics using a constant policies so the matter of fact that if you going to working in a company the company required a specific constant policy for the forensics suppose any crime crime cyber crime will be happen then who is going to do this forensics in the company and what are the policies for the company point of view be sure to suppose yeah, you are working in an enterprise company and you are a forensic expert into the company then you going to be uh, look the quite the specific uh, ip address subnet mask the names of the databases login to the databases like access required authentication required authorization required so you require some policies need to be write down that who is going to doing it and what are the different steps is going to performing it and who who the approval authority is is there and analysts should be aware of the range of the possible data sources so all the analysts okay should be understand aware about the range of possible data sources it means it means that it means you can suppose you are working in a company and you are you are a soft consultant or you you are working on a security consultant job in the company and the company are using the sim solution okay like splunk or curada or cisco elvolt or offsite any sim solution so as a security analyst you need to aware about the what the possible sources of the data is received suppose the data is coming from networking network devices suppose the data is coming from cloud computing virtual instances suppose the data is coming from mobile devices so you should be aware about what type of data is is going to become and what type of activities you you going to performing it suppose you are uh, in the soc environment and you will going to find out some some uh, different ip address from the china or some israel or different countries so what are the uh, use cases what are the challenges what are the uh, things you want to performing at same time so organizations should be proactive in collecting useful data so that is why the the companies are going to do the cyber security threat intelligence we are going to discuss cyber security threat intelligence later on we have separate slide for the cyber security threat intelligence how we going to doing it so the companies are required the more proactive in collecting the useful data it means that suppose uh, i would say that your company is going to implement dlp solution data loss prevention things so before you come to implement the dlp solution data loss prevention things you need to understand that what type of data in the company so we have uh, we going to say that sir we have some public accessible data we have confidential data we have sensitive sensitive data we have top secret data so you have to understand what type of data is going to be collecting and how what type of protection required and how you going to do forensic investigations later on so the we have some specific chart preparation preparations of and planning so you before we going to do you have to prepare a planning you going to do it the collection of data examination of data analysis of data reporting the data presentation of data and as are given and returning the data so this is the production this is the process going on so when so going to the internet and going to understand the data forensic processes wait a second i'm going to provide some information to you as well on this thing okay
processes. Okay, so you want to getting the lots of different type of processes going on. So look at it. identification of the data, preservation of the data, analysis of the data, documentation of the data, and presentation of the data. How you want to present the data? Okay, and we have an NIST. So collection and examinations, analysis, reporting, and after action review. So this is the process of the forensic investigation things. So the, this is what we want to discuss about into the particular slide. Okay, next thing, in the investigation reporting. So alternate exact ex explanations for presenting the presenting other possibilities for the events. How you want to be possibilities to presenting the event. Target audiences, law enforcement agencies, senior management, or variety of personnel. Okay, who is going to reporting? I've already suggested to you that who is the law enforcement agencies, senior management, IT personnel, third party vendors, whatever. But we want to reporting it. Actionable informations that are that, that will help the organizations address or prevent this event in the future. So, is this going to be prevented in the future or not? So, we have policies, roles, and responsibilities. So a solid foundation of the knowledge and the policy and policies. A properly trained response team required. Core areas must be represented. So this is what once you as working is in this incident handling and response topic will be discussed in the detail in the upcoming slides. So the matter of fact that the policies, roles, and responsibilities you need to understand. Wait a second, guys. Hello guys. Yes, I'm back again. Sorry for uh, you, you wait for a little bit delay. Okay. So a uh, chain of custody. Uh, we already discussed about our previous uh, slide. Uh, previous uh, talk we discussed about some chain of custody. So chain of custody, authenticity, and integrity. So part of evidence is collection, handling. What, where, when, why, and how. So what was the uh, the crime? Where it is happened? 
when it was happened, why it was happened, and how you're going to control all those things. This is the questions you're going to be asked to yourself and the different team or different uh, person, whatever it is. Tracks, evidences, handlings, how you're going to handling all those uh, tracks. This way, formal, well documented process must be followed with no exceptions. So, what are what are the no exceptions? What are documented must be going to go in there. So, ensuring the authenticity and integrity of evidences is critical. So, you require some authenticity and integrity of evidences. So, how, if we say that, how you authenticate your evidences, first of all, and is there any integrity or is there any changes and modification in your evidences? So this is what really critical thing is this all about. The current protocol for the de demonstrating uh, authenticity and integrity relies on hash functions that create unique numerical signatures uh, that are sensitive to any bit changes at SC256. So you are talking about some SC256 is more secure and sensitive information digital signatures or digital certificates you want to implement. So chain of custody, proper chain of uh, uh, Evidence collections should be maintained. Who handles evidences that at, the, at what moment it should be properly documented? Any break of COC breaks like that evidence in, in, in very important. So, the matter of fact, that what type of chain of custody looks like and what is the document is looks like. So, once you go to getting the evidences, chain of custody. So you just check it out here. Suppose you want to write down some check chain of custody and you have some different type of forms will be there. So suppose this is the uh, evidence transmission. Okay, so this is a date. This is phone numbers written. Everything is there and who's going to collect. Okay, description of the evidence evidence. And the location and collected and chain of uh, chain of evidences. So you want to require some signatures from the different parties. Okay, this is another evidence. This is the chain of custody. So you're going to get it's a different type of chain of custody of a different company of the different use cases. Let's just took a look at the uh, this one. So basically, this is the form is there. So in this form, uh, what type of evidence is who is going to collect the evidences? What is the requirement of the uh, evidences? So all those information, very important information, is going to be mentioned over there. No the chain of custody. So we have different industries in different type of chain of evidence you're going to get in there. This is one of them. So submitting agent, who is going to submit in case, item, description, evidences, descriptions, and then date, seed, time, AM, PM, cell number, phone number, agent of custody, form, true, and date. So all those very important informations will be going to be right down there. For agency. Of lab only okay so who's going to lab is going to test it this suppose you have seen that any uh, death of the person and then the post-mortem will be happen so post-mortem before it is going then the cyber cyber uh, team is going to taking some evidences collections for the forensics point of view so it is going to become in any industries like healthcare industries you want to cyber industries anything so chain of custody will going to work in any different type of industry as for the use cases. Chain of custody record and analysis of service request. So this is what the request is all about. Okay, so this is what we're talking about in who, when, where, how, when, all those questions are answered going to be, uh, this particular chain of custody will going to be providing this. Okay, so in interviewing, so investigations must be keep in mind considerations such as due processes. What are the different type of processes are due? Which information will be required? Which which things we have pending? How are we going to proceed later on? All those informations will be required. The rights of the individuals and being uh, questions. What type of different type of questions? Okay, for the matter of fact that suppose you're going to interview of the different, uh, 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 you know, what sightseeing persons. Or you can check it out what are the views. They have the same type of views, they have some different type of views of what it's all about. Considerations unique to the organizations or jurisdiction. Okay, so you're going to consider in the unique jurisdiction or what 
things like that. So reporting and documenting. So it, if an incident response team suspect, wait a second, wait a second. So if an incident response team suspects that an incident has occurred, they should start recording information and contributing to the incident. So it, the recording will be going to the start or whatever it is, the, as per the use case of the reporting. A any and all information specific to the incident in question should be captured and time stamped. So you want to be specific time, uh, incident and questions, uh, captured and time stamped. So the matter of fact that I already suggest you that the time stamp is very important. And recording is also required. So this, this is recording is the digital, uh, you know what, uh, digital evidence you can say that of the evidence the incident will happen. So the 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 the, the courts and the different company or different things it is going to recording and recording and uh, is going to be required some you know what. Recording is a digital, uh, uh, you can say that evidences, and this is a requirement for the court and different uh, law enforcement agencies. They both believe on the recording or digital uh, evidences. Second thing is the timestamps very important. When it was happened, why it happened, all documents should be dated and signed by the investigators. So we have seen that we have seen a custody, and then it is going to be signed and investigations, all those. So who's responsible, who's accountable, what are the timestamps, the digital, everything. So this is the, all those, the evidences, collections for the forensic point of view, very important. Okay. So we have going to understand and forensic procedures. What are the procedures of the forensic investigations? So five rules of evidence like be authentic. So Suppose you got the evidence, recording, okay, you got some uh, documents. So whether it is authenticating or not, this is what we're going to be learning it, okay? Second thing is how accurate. Suppose you're going to getting the accurate information, so not accurate information, this is very important to understand. As per the, as per the uh, cyber crime happened. You required, suppose your the intruders or hackers coming from your uh, gateway level firewall and you're going to provide some information so, of your routers or you're going to provide some information of your servers. So as we require some accurate information as point of view for the investigation purpose. The third one is complete. We require some complete information. We don't require the half information. We require the complete log information for the five years of the device. We require at least three years of the data of the databases. Uh, who is going to log in or not log out? So it means it means that you require at least three years, five years as per the complaint company. Suppose your complaint is a HIPAA compliant, PCIDSS compliant, GDPR compliant. So as per the investigation process, the the investigation team require the complete information of your data for the three years or five years, whatever it is. The fourth thing is convincing your your evidences. Your data should be convincing. It should be convinced that yes, this has happened. And when it was happened, who is going to happen? What was the root cause of the issues? So it is going to be convinced to the court. It is going to convince to the investigation team. And the thing is admissible. So admissible, it means that it is going to be admissible in the court. Whether what, what type of evidence is and the collection you have done it. It, well, if it is not going to be admissible in the court, there is no use of it. So the matter of fact that the court or jurisdiction requires the admissible evidences in the court. So that is why we have timestamp, we have recording, so digital evidence is requiring it. So just take a look in the picture that the hard drive for a kit. So this is the forensic kit of the hard drive. So this is the kit going to be using it to collect in the data. So all your timestamp, all your data, capturing anything will be going to be covered under the same. So media analysis, media analysis involves the recovery of the information of 
reference from information media such as hard drives, DVDs, CD-ROMs, and portable memory devices. So suppose you got some uh, CD or DVD or hard drives. So you require some how you can recover the information. Because suppose a, a attacker or a, a cyber criminal is going to be format your data from the hard disk so that no data, no logs, nothing is going to be available. But the forensic team required this hard disk and want to recover all those data from the hard drive. After it is, however, the hard disk is going to be formatted by the hacker or the person or the attacker. Okay, so this is the media analysis going to go in there. This media may have been damaged, overwritten, caused, and used and aid to hiding evidence or useful information. So this is the thing is you going to find any damage hard disk, overwritten hard disk, decode hard disk, reuse hard disk. Okay, so there are a number of issues you're going to be facing it in the challenges from the attacking point of view. So the matter of fact that you, if you are a forensic investigator, computer hacking forensic investigation thing, you need to understand the five rules of evidences. Authenticity of the data, accurate of the data, complete the data, convincing the data, and represent the core of the data. Okay, we we have some more in investigation assessment types. So suppose you guys are working on a cybersecurity. And okay, you are working in a company and you want to investigate some different type of assessment types about the network analysis, media analysis, software analysis, and hardware and embedded device reviews. So if you want to do the forensic investigations about the network analysis, so traffic analysis. So how do you want to analyze the traffic? So you require some uh, tools, okay? Like you Wireshark, you require some NMAP, you require some solar winds to check it out what are different type of devices. The second thing is log analysis. So what type of logs will be there? You need to check it out. The third one is path tracing. What are the different type of paths I'm going to search in? Suppose I'm here and I'm going to provide here and 192.168 or 1.1. So this is the things I'm going to use in there. Okay. So this is the path is not going to be reachable. So once I'm going to Close it and then check it out. And I'm going to check it out. So we have different type of commands in the beginning. I'm receiving it over there. So different type of commands will be there. So this is what the path is going to be. I'm going to check it out. We have different type of logs available. So you suppose this about system point of view. So suppose I'm going here, control D, and I'm going to check it out the logs of the particular system. So I'm go here and I'm going to manage options and then I'm going to find out the logs and events. So it will take a little time to providing information. But my system is a little slow. So suppose the intruder or hacker is going to hack the my system and going to clear the logs. So how would the investigation team going to getting the logs and events? Okay, so this is that that is why the the hacker the investigation team is going to do hard disk forensic it is going to require. So it is going to recover the data. Then we have media analysis, so we have disk imaging. Okay, you're going to be same disk imaging things happen, copy the all the data, timeline analysis, registry analysis, slack and space analysis, shadow volume analysis. So software analysis, reverse engineering, malicious code review, expert review, hardware and embedded device reviews are dedicated appliance attack points, 
firmware and dedicated memory instructions, embedded operating systems, visualized software analysis. analysis. So this all those software analysis, hardware analysis, media analysis, network analysis, these are some four types of assessment you can do in this. So we have very important things for instance, model for evidence analysis. So what are the different type of collection kit? This is a forensic kit is there. This hard drive is there. We have different type of hard drive is there. We have phone is there. We have different type of tools is there. However, I have not used till now. So this is the different type of kits. And this is the camera is there. So going to collect the snapshot of photos to the evidences. Like this, the pen drive is also required. Hard drive is also required. And this is a different type of connectors. Okay, this is the, uh, the your different type of connectors, com port, or we have uh, different type of connectors required now, as per the com computer's point of view. And how it is going to you working? Suppose you have firewall and the client one, client two, and attackers and client n, n number of clients. An attacker is going to be hit on the firewall. Once you're going to hit on the firewall, and then it is going to be administrator accounts, employees workstations, and then it's a web server portal, the absent servers. We have absent server two, and then we it going to the firewall number two and there's trusted zone and this is the database server. So you always keep your database server we require the two one firewall and second firewall. It depends in depth. All right. Okay. Now the layer two security. Okay. We have one layer of the security is firewall one and second layer of security is firewall num number two. So because database servers have all this information about your data. So network analysis, software analysis, content analysis, hardware embedded analysis, we discussed about the same. So the questions, I'm going to skip all those questions. Understand requirements of investigation types. So we have operation type of investigation. Operational resolving operational issues, conduct RC root cause analysis, criminal, conducted by the law enforcement, murder, kidnapping, terrorism, and evidences beyond a reasonable doubt. Mapping its concept of convincing. Civil legal team issues inside the outside company, family matters, real estate, etc. Mm -hmm. Evidence and promise of evidence and convincing enough to justify the claim. Regulatory. So the regulatory violation of administrative law staying in a country despite of expiration of visa, it is conducted by the regulators. So electronic discovery, so e-discovery uh, evidences extension from the electronic media. So you have seen that in the Office 365, you're going to e-discovery options will be available. So you're going to be collect the evidences from the electronic media itself. So we have electronic discovery standard process for the conducting the e-discovery. So information, information governance. So ensure that information is well organized for future e discovery efforts, identifications, preservations, collections, processing, review, analysis, product, production, and presentations. So, these are some different type of processes we're going to be doing the e discovery as well. So, conduct logging and monitoring activities. How you want to logging the events, incidents, and how you want to monitoring the activities, which what type of activity is going on. So suppose you guys are working in a company and company would like to know that what type of logging and how you want to monitoring all those activities happen in the company. Suppose any hacker is going to be hack your company. So what type of logs and events will be there so that you are a security professional going to be defend your company. So logging is the first thing and uh, monitoring is a different thing. So logging, logging is the process of recording information about events to a log file or databases. So suppose I, if you have seen my systems in events viewer, we're going to be checking out the what are the different type of logging. Okay, logs will be there. So I'm just checking it out whether it is opening or not. So this is the logging things. Whatever the things are incident will be there. So this is all those evidences are locked in my systems. This is Windows logs and I'm checking on the Windows system lock there. Okay, so this is this. These are some blocks. So suppose this is a thirty-five and this is day thirty and five month, and 
0.89 and this is a service count. So this is logged right now. If you have to check it out, it's logged. And task category is now keywords classic. This is computer systems and everything. And the the start type of background intelligence transfer service was changed from the auto start to demand start. Okay, so this is all those going to be changing at the back end. So all those logs and events are going to be logged from here. The same same thing will be applicable on the system side. Same thing is applicable on the uh, firewalls, routers, switches, any devices. So this is the error will be coming. So it's locked on this is today date and 7 p.m. The driver detected an internal driver error or device virtual box net or things like that. The box net left. This is the warning is, is there. WLAN. WN auto config detected limit connected attempting automatic discovery. So right now my wireless network is going to be auto config limited connectivity, okay? Because this is my wireless connectivity and it is going to be showing that limit connectivity sometimes. So attempting automatic recovery, same time this is happened. So this is the warning sending message to me, the log message. So same thing is applicable on every devices, not about this, this computer. It is going to be applicable on any devices. Suppose we discuss about some routers, switches, and uh, systems, servers, anything. So what is the process? This process of logging is the process of recording information about events to a log file or databases. Number two, logging captures events, changes, messages, and other data that describe activities that Occurred on a system. So I have checked on all those changes, messages, and activities occurred on the system. Logging will record events, whereas auditing examination of expects everything one of the compliances. So logging will come to check it out that what type of event is, events will be there. Okay. And the auditors is going to be examined all those things. Okay. Suppose you come to check it out the, the it logging things into the firewall. And as an auditor, I'm coming to your company as auditing. I have I, I would like to see that who or the persons, administrators, are logged into the system at what time. So this is the, due to the logging things. Logs will be available. I'm going to check it out. Another thing is monitoring and account, accountability. So mon monitoring is a necessary function to ensure that subjects such as users and employees can be held accountable for their actions and activities. So suppose you are the administrator of the company and what are the rights, what are the privileges do you have? You have the privileges to read the files, read only, write only, what type of access do you have? And what type of activities you want to do in it? So users claim an identity such as with a username and through their identity by authenticating and audit trails record their activity while they are logging. So what are the audit trails? Okay, and what are the uh, things are going on? So this is a requirement of who is going to be accountable for the actions and how you going to monitoring all those things. So common log type security logs, system logs, application logs, firewall logs, proxy logs, change logs. So you have going to find out different type of logs and different things different devices. So at, as we discussed about in my system, wait a second, it is going to opening it. So my systems, you have seen application logs, security logs, setup logs, system log, forwarding events. You have to find a number of things. This is my application security logs. This is my application logs. So yes, you want to find out this setup logs, system logs, different type of logs. So this is we discussed the common log types. Okay. Then we're talking about some very important topic like intrusion detection and prevention fix. What is IDS and what is IPS? And this is the question will going to become 100% in your interview questions answers. And once you go um, in written examinations or anything. So intrusion detection systems is ID IDS, a technology that alters in organizations to adverse or unwanted activity. Okay. So this is what is going to unwanted activities will be happening. So it is going to be de detected. Suppose you in your company, the firewall will be there and some virus is coming inside. So it is going to be detected all those things. Intrusion prevention systems, IPS, 
monitor activity like an IDS, but automatically takes a preventive action to unacceptable activity is detected. So it is going to be detected, but it's going to prevent same thing. So I am going to do some practical things for the same so that you're going to be easily understand what I'm trying to tell you. So we have firewalls, different firewalls will be there. Uh, we will talking about 3650 as well. Anything, any firewall you can break it up as per use cases, as per you like it. 4650, 9000 series, whatever it is. You have free freedom to choose any firewall and work and check it out what, are, what are the things inside the firewalls. And then we talk more from security services. And in security services, you just you checked out here that intrusion and prevention things. Okay. So what are different type of intrusion will be coming? You, you, it is going to blocking it. So the first thing is enable the intrusion and prevention systems for zone network and zone pages. And we have some IP, IPS status. Intrusion prevention system is right now signature databases. So it is written down down a bit. So whatever the signatures, okay, your firewall going to be updated. It is going to be blocking as per the signatures. We discussed about later on what is signatures all about. So this is the, right now. This is the signatures are updated right now. If your signatures are not going to be updated, updated, updated you know, say into the firewalls, it is not going to block the latest type of threats in the company. So it is more requirement and mandatory things that you need to in update all the time your signatures of your firewalls. Okay, so right now 35, 30, this is the today date, and it was checked that it's going to update it or not update it. Okay, that's going to be with the IPS, IPS. So IDS, IPS have a separate license required for any firewalls. Suppose you're going to use Sonic Wall, you're going to use Palo Alto, you're going to Fortigate. You're going to use cyber ROM, you're going to checkpoint, whatever. So IDs, IPs have separate license for the same. So how are you going to check it out the license? First of all, I'm going to showing it right now. Go to the license page and then check it out if it's a license based things or not. Then we come to here, go there. This is okay. Uh, this is not extend ideas now. This is this one, okay? This is coming from this one. This one. Okay, so this is license one. Okay, this is license one, and this is 31st 25. So, the intrusion prevention system, okay, IPS, application control, application visualization, and this firewall antivirus, gateway antivirus. So, that's all those things are licensed also. So, you require always the license for the IDs, IPS using it. Okay. And we come to network services security and this is I intrusion prevention things. So before we go to do intrusion prevention things, first of all, we're going to do this in concepts. So IDS is going to be det detection and intrusion prevention system is going to prevent. So as per this particular uh, firewall, we have two options will be available. We have detection all, we have prevention all. So this is thing is IDS intrusion detection systems and this IPS intrusion prevention systems. Suppose you want to be unchecked all those two check marks. So this is the particular IDS is going to detect, but it is not going to blocking it. 
suppose any malware any virus is any anything will be coming uh, and unsuspicious activities happen so it is going to detect it but it is not going to prevent so there is no use of it my dear if you going to only detect detection of things then you want to enable all, all those things but you want to uh, detect and want to prevent same time you want to check mark all those things go down there so what are the activities that i am discuss about right now? suppose the backdoor attacks will be happen in your firewalls suppose database attacks will be happen suppose any bad files going to be uh, attacking all your firewalls okay suppose any viruses comes from comes from different things like that we have web attacks we have web client attacks we have voip attacks as sql injection happen has been done there are scada attacks will be there so any viruses coming you come your firewalls so it is basically what you what is going to do in the here so it is going to detect it if it is going to detect it and it is going to preventing all those things so you are going to see that we have some uh, enabled this one and we have enabled all those two, this one as well. so if you going to changing the features okay we going to go to the categories and go there and then we have viruses go to the viruses and we just want to check it out of what type of things is there applicable to so we have seen that we have viruses this is a different type of viruses we have seen it this is signatures okay so you we have seen that we have detected and we have prevented same time and this is the signature id is there and this is the outcome direction so we want to check it out the settings click on the setting and then you have seen the preventive prevention is enabled detection is enabled suppose i am going to do disable those things so it is going to detect the things but it is not going to prevent the things okay so this is what the things will be you going to be using it so that's what i'm discuss about in the slide idea and ips concept okay let's move to the things so we discuss about the another very important term is security information and event management sim solution so sim solution is also very important things so sim and sem we have another specific slide and we going to do separate class for the sim solution and source solution but you going currently you are going to understand the concepts the basic fundamentals you going to be understand right now so a group of technologies which aggregate information about accesses control and system activity to store for analysis and correlation so the matter of fact that we require some technologies to aggregate all your informations and control the system and activity and analysis and correlation we going to do in it so security related audit audit logs and typically track successful and failed access attempts privilege usage and service failures we going to do in it somebody so suppose you are going for the interview and interviewer is going to ask you question that what is a sim solution and what is the architecture designing of the sim solution so once you talking about some architecture designing of the sim solution so you need to understand that first of all we have some different type of devices like firewall ids ips windows linux web db databases so we have different type of devices we have right now and all those devices are going to generate generating the logs okay they have some logs so we have two things will be there we have push method and we have pull methods what does it mean pull and push methods so windows and linux and firewalls they these are the uh, devices going to push the logs to the sim solution or anything push the logs and pull databases and log file directory are going to pull the pull the logs okay database is going to pull pull the logs so we talking about some of we have some firewall is sending the logs id is sending the logs windows firewall uh, sending the logs linux is sending the logs w is sending logs and db is pull the logs so we have event collector is there in, inside the sim solution so event collector what what is going to doing it it is going to do smart connector it is and processing normalization and aggregation of your logs so it is going to processing all your logs to be processing at the same time it is going to normalization okay what is normal what is things 
aggregate this is normal message high message warning alerts events whatever it is this one check it out okay so this is the basically you going to say syslog server api jdbc snmp snmp is simple network management protocol we have checked in the previous class we discussed about snmp protocol so it is basically we are going to enable the snmp protocol into the devices networking devices and then they going to send the, the blocks and events to the different uh, collectors okay like you want to implement solar winds prtg mrtg cola soft whatever the tools you want to using it you want to get the logs once you want to enable the snmp into the devices so the event collector is going to collect all those events all those processes all those memorization categories and that's once the event collector sending the information to event processor so what how you going to process all those things so it is logging mapping of log source cre and store it is going to storing it is going to mapping all those source things so we have suppose firewalls how many num numbers is going to be logging this firewalls so event collector say that yes we have 20 or 30 logs for the firewall going to be logged by the these persons and then sending information to the event processor so event processor have separate column for logging firewalls and then sending to the console of the sim solution so is collation is aggregation all those activities has been done by the sim solution at the back end and then once it is going to event processor sending the information in console the alerts will be generated okay on the sim solution and the sim solution has been checked by the security analyst team and they are going to check the alerts same time so this is what the architecture designing of the sim solution in the broad view so we discuss about in our three, in our in our next few classes we have sim solution source solution so we can check out check out the more things inside the uh, sim solution what is the use cases why we require sim solution what are different companies of sim solution and we going to do some practical as well all those things so we have logs and system informations may be collected for a variety of reasons including but not limited to regulations or compliance requirements so the matter of fact suppose you are working in a company like pci dss company or hipaa company company or you can say your company uh, is basically gdp based so as per the regulations as per the pci dss regulation pci is uh, your payment card industry okay where the companies are required your debit card credit card information so it means that it means that uh, you pay bill or you can say paytm or your Uh, Amazon.com. So all those companies are required your debit card information, or credit card information. Okay. So as per the regulation, the compliance requirement, they have to keep the same solution at their premises because these are these are some brand names. How are they going to doing all those activities? Number two, internal accountability and non-reputation. So what are the things that internal accountability? Who is accountable? So we have separate roles, jobs, responsibilities will be there in the company. Who's accountable for for what? And non-reputation. Anything is going to be sending to the source destination, and the destination not denied or source is not going to deny that I have not sent this particular packet. Risk management functions. So it is required for risk management functions. So different type of cyber crimes are increased day by day. So you have heard about the zero day attacks. so the zero day attacks are the attacks where there is no patching or there is no solution is available in the market right now so performance monitoring and trend trending so what are the performance and monitoring trending is required have event correlation and root cause analysis in case of event correlation suppose how many times the system will go shut down how many times the system is logged in how many times the data is being lost Incident response. Okay, it's going to respond in the uh, response and investigations. So we have seen that we have collection, log collection, log analysis, event correlation, log forensics, IT, IT compliance, application log monitoring, other object access auditing, real time auditing, dashboards, reporting, number of things we have seen. So we have seen characteristics, same and log analytics. So storage, store or store review. Raw information, source, and formats. 
aggregate information, normalize the information function in the database and collecting common information, analytical tools, process map, and exact the information, alerting and reporting tool. So we have the coordinate reporting tool. So we have seen that we have security devices, servers and host, network and virtual activity, databases activity, application activity, configuration information, vulnerability information, and user activity. We want to do that. So all those informations like security devices, secure servers and hosts, network virtual activity, database activity are going to be event correlation and signing to the same solution. So extensive data sources, deep intelligence is equal to exceptionally accurate and actionable insights. So the matter of fact that same solution and lock analysis tools we're going to be using it all the time all the time. So egress monitoring and we have ingress monitoring. Okay, so suppose I am going to open a firewall. So if you're going through the network interfaces cards and you want to find out the things which I'm discussed right now. Go to network appliances. Monitor. So go to live monitor. Okay. And then we go to go there. So this is the things ingress and egress. Okay, so we have ingress and egress things. So the data is coming incoming and data is going to out, outgoing. Okay, so ingress is there and egress is there. Or the bandwidth like this. Is there. So I'm talking about here the ingress is inside, egress is outside, with things going on. So filtering and restricting the follow of outbound information from one network to another and has ensures unauthorized or malicious traffic never leaves the internal. Traffic, okay, so your internal network the egress traffic is not going to be coming. It's going to filter in the traffic. Primary objective is, is should not leave unauthorized traffic to outside firewall as capability to verify the packets and traffic from inside the outside. The issue of a single point of failure due to incorrect of the architecture egress filtering and systems can be problem here. So there are many ways uh, data leaves the organization controls that uh, email, FTP, portable media, removal of hardware, printed, image capture. So these are some ways the data is going to the outside. Ingress traffic is any data communication is going to come outside of the network destination to a host of your internal network. Okay. Ingress traffic can be in the form of applications and data process on a remote server or any data coming from the internet. Okay, so any data coming from the internet is just monitoring is all about. So IDS firewalls are going to check it out, all those things. So we have checked into the particular firewall that we have ingress traffic and we have egress traffic is all the right. So this is egress traffic and we have ingress traffic. So data is coming from a different source and this is your interfaces. Okay. We have very important type topic like data leak and data loss prevention things. So data leak prevention, DLP solution, we have Symantec, MacCafe, Sophos, different type of uh, data loss prevention of the DLP solution available in the market right now. So we discussed about the techniques uh, and to stopping the loss of sensitive information that occurs in that enterprise. So yes, we this is going to be stopping the loss of sensitive information into outside of the enterprises. It is blocking all those things. So defining data leak prevention is the most DLP solution include, include a suite of technologies that facilitate three way, uh, three key objectives locate and catalog sensitive information stored throughout the enterprise, monitor and control the movement of sensitive information across enterprise networks, and monitor and control of the movement of the sensitive information on end user systems. So it's a basically DLP solution is basically 
uh, your essential information going to outside inside it is going to be monitoring and check it out so data at rest data in motion and data in use so the matter of fact that data at rest stored in enterprise so a data dweller sometimes called a spider is an internet internet bot that systematically browses the world wide web typically or the purpose of creating interest of the search engine and that's companies like google and facebook use web crawling to collect the data okay so web crawling is basically the collection of the data at data at rest the point of view data in motion so network network based dlp it is a capability dlp dpi deep packet inspection and in, uh, inspect header and content so if you talking about some dpi solution okay deep packet inspection so in this particular firewall we have dpi solution as well go to manage option and your data is how to going to be deep packet inspection going to doing it or not doing it So DPI packet deep packet inspection is a license based software we already discussed. It's a deep packet inspection. Okay, so this is a deep packet inspection. This is a deep packet inspection, DP SSL. Okay, so the DP SSL is deep packet inspection on SSL secure circuit layer. Okay, SSL or SSL. So what happened in the present? License required. Okay, the license required. I see. Okay, no problem with this. So, uh, data in use host host based DLP most challenging aspect of DLP copying data through the USB. Okay, so data in use. We so, organization benefits derived from uh, deploying the DLP solution to protect. Critical business data and intellectual property. So you need to understand before you want to implement the DLP solution, what is the critical data of the company or the business, and what is intellectual property. So I'm talking about here like copyrights, trademarks, patents, uh, trade secrets. This is intellectual property of the company. Second thing is improve the compliances. From the DLP point of view, if you want to implement the DLP solution, it's going to improve the compliances. Reduce data breach risk. Okay, your data breach risk will be reduced. Enhance training and awareness. Okay, you want to be training and awareness. Suppose the data is sensitive, and suppose any person wants to sending outside, the warning message will become. Improve business processes. You want to improve the business processes. It means that suppose you you don't know what where it is the file is going to be uh, uh, is a top secret data is it is a public accessible data sensitive file or, or not sensitive file so it is automatically categorized you can you need to be click on the only category of is a sensitive information or not now from your word or excel file and it is automatically will be sending to the specific location the business process is going to be improved optimize disk space and network bandwidth which is going to be Disk space and network bandwidth is going to be using it. Detect rogue and malicious software, which is there. So I'm skip the logs in the questions. We have securely provisioning resources. So we have asset inventory. So asset any organization need needs an expansion of its security and compliance program, graphic tools and uh, processes to track its asset inventory. So we have you talking about some asset inventory, okay? Assets, your hardware, software in the company, okay? Virtual assets in the company, okay? Like virtual assets it means your licenses, your physical assets, your hardware, software, firmware, and more. So detailed hardware and software inventory are must for recovery and integrity purposes. So once you talk about the asset inventory, okay? So you need to be talking about some what are the virtual assets and what is your hardware assets. So the operational security 
Details should be collected, such as the type of data stored and processed on the asset and asset classification and special handling requirements. So, the matter of fact that an active directory, library that ID and LDAP servers can provide a large portion of its information. So, if you have used on the active directory and LDAP, you want to find out the printers, users, groups, uh, hardware like router, switching. All those results will be there. Renewability scanners, configuration scanners, network mapping tools, and they provide a basic information about all the ports in the version IP's range. So if you use the solar winds, if you're not using the solar winds, I will want to uh, tell you later on. We have separate class I'm going to do for solar winds or network mapping devices. Tools that manage that hardware licenses can perform a large portion of it. This task. So, as was mentioned in the previous section, the MP solution typically have a discovery capability that can serve the purposes. Okay, so we have very important one is configuration management. So, configuration management protects the pro totality of an IT system by controlling its configurations. So suppose you want to be configure a firewall or you want to use a implement a from where going to implement on the firewall. So a discipline for evaluation, co coordinations, approving or disapproving, and implementing changes to artifacts used to uh, con construct and maintain software systems. The change management works as with the configuration management together. The importance of change uh, configuration management is organizations apply configuration management for establishing baseline and tracking controlling and managing many aspects of business development and operations. So you want to managing all those business developments. Organizational stakeholders must review and expect changes before they are introduced. So you want to be introduced all those changes. All system changes are documented and approved before the change occurs. So whatever the change is going on in the company, like you want to change the firmware of your routers or switches or your firewalls, the, the changes are approved from the authority. Okay, so the change management team comes into the picture. The system baseline is updated uh, based on the configuration management approved changes. So, who is going to approve the changes? So, configuration control focus on the specific both on deliverables and processes. Change control is focused on identifying, documenting, and controlling changes to the project and the project baselines. A change management plan. Documents how to changes will be monitored and controlled. So there are three things: change control, change, change control, configuration control, and change management control. Understand and apply of fundamental security operations concepts. So we have talking about some very really fundamental concepts of the security. Need to know what is the need to know basis. List to riches. So suppose you are working in a company and one of the person is going to new on board in your company. So suppose the IT manager is joined in the company and what the need to know, what are the rights, what are the permissions, what are the documents, what are the uh, the, uh, the document or the self drives, anything, need to know by the person. So suppose the IT manager, so he should always be accessible all the IT infrastructure in the company. This need to know this is. So you need to be provide the privileges to the user to read only of all the documents of the IT infrastructure. Wait a minute. List privileges, so you're going to provide them some list privileges. So suppose any new onboard hiring on the database team. So you need not to provide any modification permissions to the user, whether it is a high profile person. So you need to provide some list privileges, which means that read only access. And after the one to two months later on, as per the approval, you need to provide them the modification rights on the databases. Separation of duties and responsibilities. Separation of duties, how if the person is going to be separate for your, for, from your or companies? So what type of uh, activities you're going to perform? In? Suppose any terminations in, in your company. So is it ethical termination or is not? And what are the responsibilities, accountabilities? Privileged, privileged account and management. What is the privileged account? 
you are going to privileged or not privileged to log into the database server or not. Job rotation, suppose uh, we have one team, one team or two teams are working, so they require some job rotations. For the the fraud will be reduced. So job rotation required into the banking systems. You have seen it. The cashier is, is not a single person. Every person in the bank is a cashier. Every person going to resolve the queries just because of reduce the fraud into the banking system. Information lifecycle. So we discuss about data asset security in our next uh, slide. So the information lifecycle we're going to discuss. Service level agreements. So there's agreement with their client, third party vendor, and the company. Uh, as per the agreement, they have mentioned that what are the the financial conditions and what type of support going to provide by the third party vendor to the company. So need to need to know and list privileges. We we have seen that let list privileges requires that a user or process be given no more access to list than necessary to perform a task job task and function. So the objective is to limit users and processes to access only resources and tools necessary to perform assigned functions. So we have objectives is to you know what limit users to process the access only for the necessary uh, perform assigned functions. So a, a, a companion con concept of list privileges is to principle of need to know. You come your company going to be uh, come to your company and he would, he would like to know the list privileges going to provide by this identity. So if the goal of the list privilege is to reducing access to a, the bare minimum, so need to know defines that minimum as as a need for access based on the job or business requirement. For example, need to know access granted only the data so resources they need to perform permission and the list privilege access granted to the privileges necessary to perform and assign tasks from security clearance. So a list provides a security clearance and the native noise permission, whatever information you want to provide in it. Separation of duties and responsibilities. So separation of duties is responsible to ensure that no single person has total control over a critical function of the systems. So, so separation of duties means that suppose you are in the company, you're working in a company, and you have all the accountability responsibilities of networking, security, databases, everything. And suppose you leave the company, or suppose any mishappening happen to the specific person, then the company is how the company is going to be uh, taking a backup solution. Or the, the possibility is also there, you can do some frauds as well. So the main goal of separation of duties is to reduce the fraud. You are going to procuring the company for the company. You are going to managing for the company. You are asset asset manager of the company. So you are going to do whatever the th uh, financial things. From your end, so this reduces the fraud. That is why the separation of duties comes in the picture. The aggregation of duties. So the goal is to ensure that individuals do not have access, excessive system access that may result in a conflict of interest. When duties are properly segregated, no signal employees will have the ability to com commit fraud to make mistake, mistake and have the ability to cover it up. Okay, so the segregation of duties basically. You go to segregation, okay, and you need to do different type of job all the time, doing it in a banking system like that. Two person control, so two person control often called two men do is similar to the segregation of duties if required. The approval of two individuals for a critical task. Suppose two persons are going to do critical tasks. One person is is, is not available, any happen, mishappening happen, then different person is going to be available. Job rotation, so job rotation sometimes called rotation of duties. So it means simply that employees are rotated through jobs. At least some of the job responsibilities are rotated, rotated to different employees. So using job rotation as security control provides peer review, reduces fraud, and enables cross turning job rotation and can be both a different and detection mechanism. Mandatory vacations to provide a form of peer review and helps uh, detect fraud of the collision. So suppose uh, the companies are going to provide a mandatory vacation for the employee who are working in a uh, critical functionality as been done by the person. So it is going to be check out the fraud once he going to go at the leave. 
job rotation movement of the one role to another role, executive control, and uh, mandatory vacation sending an employee to vacation is detective control. We want to detective control. Monitor specific privileges. So special privileges operations are acti activities that require special across of with elevated rights and permissions uh, to perform any many activities and sensitive job tasks. For example, creating a new user account, adding new routes and uh, the router table, adding the configurations, okay, firewall. So it is a monitor specific privileges going to provide in it. Information lifecycle is creations, processing, storage, transmission, and duplication of destruction of the data. So this is all those things we're going to discuss in the next slides. Service level agreements. So service agreement is in between the organization and the outside entity, such as vendor. So vendor versus the companies, they have some agreement for the services going to providing it. Okay, so we have different type of media sanitize of the information. So uh, this section specifically address uh, protection measures of media. How do you want to protect your medias? Like marking, you want to do mark of your media. Okay, you want to protect your media from staff need daily duties based on their specific goals. You want to go for the staff creation for okay. So transport, physical transport, sanitation, you want to disposal of the data. So conduct incident management, detect, detection, response, mitigating, reporting, recovery, remediation, and lesson learned. These are the things we want to go for it. Okay, so uh, the guys, we are into the 68 slide numbers. The rest of the things we want to do later on. So incident reporting. Okay, this is going on. So we are in the 68 slide numbers. We want to do tomorrow all those things. So what what I'm going to recommend it to you for the homework to you. So guys, first of all, just try to get some information about some solution. Second thing is IDS and IPS information. Third thing is forensic investigations. Forensic investigations, okay, and investigation processes. Okay. And types of forensic investigation. So investigations going to go and give me some assignments. Okay, give me some like document. PDF, whatever you have, please share to me. This is the assignment for you. So, SIM solution, IDs, IPS, forensic investigations, investigation processes. So, till the time I'm going to send to you this particular slide, and we're going to be, we, have, we are in the 59, 59, 61, okay, and this is 183 slides are still pending over there. So, we're going to cover tomorrow all those things, okay. Till the time I'm going to send them to you, just try to study all those things, my dear friends. Share to me all those things so that I will going to check it out. So any con any confusion, any questions you would like to ask to me regarding the same? No, sir. No, sir. I'm going to send to you this particular slide. So go for some uh, investigation purpose, okay? This is important for you. And rest of the things we're going to do cover in our next slides. And also I'm gonna send in to you one more important information. I'm going to Provide the information for this. Next second.
I'm going to send it to you and I'm going to also going to provide information to your circuit. This is the IT cell delegation roadmap I'm going to discuss with you. So this is the security, information security, suppose, right? We are in information security. So look at this. Okay, so we are in the information security, right? So we have beginner, okay, beginners, company a plus, security plus, company a plus. Intermediate. Then we're talking about CCNA, CES, CHFI, okay, MCSA, Compria Plus, Network Plus, Security Plus, we're going to discuss about all those things. Advanced things, we're talking about from CCS, KCCNP, okay, CISA, MCSC, CCDP, Compria Plus, Security Plus, all those things. And the expert, we have CCIE, we have CISM, we have CISSP, we have CGAIT. So information security, we're expert, advanced, intermediate, and beginners. So I have the combination of each and everything. That was beginner, intermediate, advanced, and expert. So what I'm going to do right now, my dear friends. So if you just take a look here, we have everything. CES, CHFI, CISA, CISM, CSP, everything is here. Network security, everything is here. So the topics we, we discussed right now, uh, is uh, information security and risk management we discussed later as uh, uh, which one uh, this communication and network security we discussed and today we discuss about some security operations okay and once we're going to do all those basic fundamental things then we're going to go for the CES certified ticket hacking things so we have everything we would like to be covered in the into the courses which we have seen right now here so we have advanced things like we're going to do CSSP some modules, we're going to do some modules of CCNP and CISA and MCSC, Compare Plus, Security Plus. We're going to complete some of the modules like CCNA, CEH, CEH part this one, the CISSP part, we, we are currently doing it. Compare Plus, Security Plus, we're going to do it. So we have covered intermediate, expert, advanced, and expert, everything we want to cover in it. Okay, so I already sent you this particular uh, um, I guess a delegation roadmap. So this is a different type of certifications, but we're going to be covered each and everything in the one. Thing. Okay, so please take a look and thank you for your time. Take care and good night. And we're going thank to you, be sir. working at the same time tomorrow. Thanks for your time. Bye. Take care.